Hello everybody and welcome back live to the Sim Raceway Sunday race off. We're on the penultimate race then tonight and it's the return of the BMW M3 E92 GT2s from the 2010 year. We've got two different models of course, the 2010 or the standard GT2 model and this time it's a skill quad between 900 and 1000 which means we're going to see even more familiar faces from the Sunday race off history. We've got Elite Speedway who's currently leading the top of the time sheets with a 158.624. Madtrox 213 makes his return on a 159.059. We've got Rick Speed, Daniel C, Mr. PA, uh, Engage, who I believe is a new driver into it, as is Fregel. Uh, and we've got El Nino makes his return, Bull 666, John Daniels and Mr. Jones 83. So with four minutes of qualifying to go, then the pressure's really on for these drivers to get the most out of the session. The time wears on. The track is around, as we say, two minutes a lap, so maybe one and a half more laps, depending on where the driver is situated on the circuit right now. And let's just see what the... Uh, let's take a ride on board then. I don't think in today's stream we've actually done an onboard lap with someone. Let's find someone who's near the start finish straight or coming down there we go mr pa then p6 is coming down the start finish straight let's give you a ride on board of the breno circuit then so we go in towards turn one it's quite a short bit straight in comparison to some of the others but does give you time to get up to speed swoop into turn one you ideally want to start p2 here not p1 you want to start on that inside line grip it for long and long and long and then you launch on towards that left hand apex through turn two up the gears in towards sixth then as you hit the rev limit to 134 miles an hour as the car starts to max out as you go in towards turn three very quick and snappy left-hander down into third gear easy on the throttle don't ever kill it the aim of steering that car will bite back at you in an instant as you reverse the car back through turn four same effect not too hard on the throttle as the time wears on so you want to try and drift the car down then in towards turn number five pierre has got a bit of traffic up in front it's a double right hander here so it requires the utmost of focus and the utmost of consistency go offline here and it will cost you tenths and tenths of seconds in towards the left hander now this very tight hairpin you don't want to run wide there through there's a very nasty barrier on the right hand side followed by a very short gravel trap in towards a very very long chicane i'd say you want to try and come out as close as you can towards the apex as opposed to the normal chicane where you go out and out you want to go in and in to then come out in a much better line. Down the next tiny straight down again, you want to try and get as much momentum as you can down here. Get in the slipstream with your opponents as you come in towards the next right-hander. Follow it round, ease on the throttle, depending on how confident you are with your car and your own ability. And you come up here once again. You can't see the braking point, very difficult corner. You have to trust the markings on the circuit of the lockups from the other cars. Early on the throttle through here, careful to not kick out that back end you climb up towards turn number 12 and 13 again through the gears hitting a speed of approximately 130 miles an hour lifting off down into fourth down into third and a nice drift through there don't go out too deep or go near the pit lane it will cost you valuable time ride the apex and come down the straight to set yourself a time and mr pa is going to set that picturesque time of a two minutes and i said since still in p6 so he's got some work to do as we come towards the end of this qualifying session, we've got 1 minute 12 seconds left on the clock. So it's still Elite Speed Wayless top, Balls in second, Madtrox third, Fregel in P4, Rick Speed up into fifth, PA in sixth, seventh place, John Daniels. Nice little there going for him so far. And the first man in the two minute mark. Ninth, uh, eighth place is Daniel C. Ninth place is Mr. Jones. Tenth in Gange, El Nino 11th. And they run out of runners in the final 48 seconds of the qualifying session. So now it's going to be imperative for these drivers to try and get the best time they can. They need to get to the line as soon as possible if they want a cheeky chance at a second lap. So let's see who's going to make it then just before the session ticks zero. Ten seconds left. Who's going to come towards the end or who's it going to be? Doomsday 4. The session draws now. Daniel C gets another one. Daniel C gets another lap. I think our pole sitter does Elite Speedway as well. Yes, he does. Elite Speedway gets one. The rest of the drivers won't. So two more drivers in. More importantly, Elite Speedway is currently three tenths up 
on ball 666 will get another chance to improve his time to try and stabilize that pole position balls will not let's take a look at balls and he's coming up towards the penultimate corner he needs a good lap he needs to gain three tenths of a second almost four tenths in fact to try and get a pole position the time is running out it's hit zero the man with the checkered flags waving is not enough and he's back into the pit lane however why would you go for pole position? Second place starts on the inside. Take the EVA race, for example. It was not Ragster who led the race into turn one. It was G Cortese who had the inside line. Madtrox will start in P3. He does not improve his time. Freckle has actually spun on his lap. He's on the grass, so no improvement there for him. Rick Speed, PA, El Nino all finished. Daniel C still going, as is our current pole sitter. I can't see him being beaten, to be brutally honest with you. And uh, Mr. PA, as you say, his session is also over. But it's Daniel C. And then it will be Elite Speedway. So Daniel's got a chance here to get himself a bit higher than P9. He'll be one of only two drivers on the track at this stage. So let's see exactly just how much pressure he can put on in this final sector of qualifying. He needs a massive, massive gain here. He needs to get himself the best final sector he's had all afternoon. Question is, is it going to be there or no? There's only one way to find out. Now it's just to take the like of the onboards here. Comes towards the end of the lap through the final corner. And then here he comes then down the main straight. Take a look at Daniel C. Then we'll take a look at Elite Speedway. Does he improve? He goes for the big gain there. And that is the best segment he's done all afternoon. Daniel C finds himself much higher. Elite Speedway does not improve, but he does sit on pole position. We'll be back very shortly with the full race.
Okay, so we're back live then with the Sunday race off. We've got a lot of pressure on our contestants here today. Ten laps of the Bruno circuit is not the easiest circuit to conquer in the world. And it's going to be Bull 666 who needs a good run off the line. He wants to take the into turn one. He needs the best lap of his life in the opening one so now we have the four red lines we're about to find out here we go then the red start to rise as the blood yeah. pressure we're away even starts there by our two pole sisters as the drivers flood their way in towards the first corner i think well honestly at least we may have done enough Balls is going to attack into turn one though he's getting himself alongside and that's a disadvantage in pole position balls has got there at least speedway keeps second he's fighting with him though so there's nothing you can do really on the outside third place is daniel fourth is engaged Big start there for Madrox and the rest of the drivers. Always oh, three wide there. I'm not sure that's going to end badly. They've got to be careful. The race ends a lot faster than uh, one lap. It lasts a lot longer than just lap number one. Now, 13 corners in this racetrack. Simple mass. 13 times set. 130 total corners. 33 miles overall. You cannot win it in the first lap. You have to be careful. Especially... Out of circuit like this is Daniel now attacks Matrox 213. And the rest of the field are really starting to bunch up behind, in fact. The top three pulling away, then four backwards getting a lot really, really close together at the moment. You can see two lots of two side by side there. That's Mr. P.A. Fregel, uh, Mr. Jones, and Rick Speed all getting very up close and personal contact. And Jones takes a bit of a nudge. And he's able to really hold on to the car. That's the best car control I've seen for quite some time. And now, to, now John Daniels has had a very bad start. He's down to P12. I haven't seen what actually happened to him now, but he's got himself, wow, 15 seconds or so now behind our race leader. So, unfortunately, a bad start there. But as we say, it's not over in turn one. You need a lot of leverage here. 10 laps of the Renault circuit. As we said, it's no easy task as Ball 666 retains the lead. He started P2. And he, of course, started on the inside line. And it, it's an achievement to get P1 to prove you the fastest here. But at a circuit like Bruno, you want the inside line for the starting corner. And that is what Bulls had. He just got himself a great launch off the line. Got himself in position. And there's nothing Elite Speedway can do except sit with him and try and take it back. So let's see what Speedway can do then. Lap 2 out of 10. We've into turn 1 again. This is where it all happened last time. And Elite Speedway really starting to up the pressure now. He's got to stay all over him. Start throwing those body punches like with the boxing match that I say before. We go for a move here. The slipstream has proved vital. Now he thinks better of it. Very sensible driving by Elite Speedway. And that's to say the least. You cannot ask for more sensible uh, driving than that. But Elite Speedway is him it's got to be said now let's just take a look at lap times lap two this is what i'm intrigued by are matt rocks daniel c and the rest of the guys making progress we know that in there p5 bit of a battle i'll say bit of a battle he's getting absolutely sorted of there lazarus has got himself past he's jumping to p6 and so seeing a look at the chat earlier on the guys really getting behind lazarus today they want him to succeed he's almost in reach of a top five at the moment in the black bmw e93 gt2 car let's see what he can do but well, more importantly as well, what our race leaders can do, Elite Speedway still separated by about six tenths of a second. As they come up towards the penultimate corner again, let's just take a look as well at their lap time as they come across. So still, Elite Speedway took right behind that. That really looked like he was drifting it, well, drafting it almost through there. So across the line they come there, let's take a look at that time. So it's a 158.8 for our leader, 158.6 on Elite Speedway, who's now made his charge on the inside. And we have to see that time another time because Elite Speedway is getting very aggressive now. He's still alongside, that should be job done. Balls comes back though, will be on the inside for turn two and that is a great flow of this circuit. That is what it's all about. And Elite Speedway is going to try around the outside though, he's going to give it everything he can. And somehow, Bulls comes out in the lead. 
At least Speedway trying to come back up the inside again. How did that work? And he must be scratching his head there. He's done everything he can. He's got on the inside of turn one. And it can't even result in a pass, unfortunately. And that is exactly how this racing goes. And now PA and Lazaros going to duel away to see what Laz can do. Uh, uh, the door is slammed shut. Take a look behind as well there. you got Rick Speed and John Daniels who's fallen behind further in fact. I think he may have lagged out a little. His connection wasn't looking too strong a minute ago. The battle with our race leader. The gap has actually improved a little bit now on lap 3 out of the 10. Quick run down of the order then. So it's still ball 666 separated by 4 tenths of a second from pole sitter Elite Speedway. Matrox 2 on 3 in 3rd. 4th Daniel C. 5th is in Gange. Then you got 6th and 7th close together. Lazarus barely holding on against Mr. P.A. Fregel, Mr. Jones, El Nino there. And then Rick Speed in P11 with John Daniels rounding out your order in 12th position. The balls comes through the final corner followed by Elite Speedway. And Elite Speedway... He's going to get the slip stream. And no, he doesn't get it that time round. In fact, he was 2 tenths slow that time round. So not looking ideal for him, but he's got a healthy slip stream coming out of turn two. But he looked to the inside here, then let's take a look. He's going to go... Oh, he's very close to him indeed. the rest of the field as well actually you've kind of uh, forgotten about the guys behind Lazarus getting very up close and personal now to engage they go through and then go into the left hander now and I almost tried to go up the inside he's had to think twice about that in fact he wasn't going to move done through there and engage is doing a very good job at defending here he's not budging off the inside line meaning the drivers behind have to be doing all the hard work and look at them all circulating around there goes Rick Speed, he's in the slip stream in the very back of the field. We'll take back on our leaders as well because they're coming towards the end of their lap now. In towards the last few corners, the least speedway just 0.2 tenths behind there at the last sector. I'll come up in towards the final couple of corners. And through the final straight they come then, this is going to be key, let's take a look at lap time this time round. Is Elite Speedway going to be the man to beat him? Yes, he's three turns quicker on the inside again then. This needs to be do or die for Elite Speedway, both leave plenty of room. Balls though, is not going to give up, Speedway hugging the apex with everything he has. And he's just about got a bit again, Balls on the inside, he knows he can defend that way there. And I think he's got it done again. Speedway needs to try and pass around the outside of turn one to get on the inside of turn two. The problem is it's easier to defend around the outside and pass on the inside. So at least Speedway, while he can always get the job done there, he's easier to defend around the outside for turn two. So it means that he needs to try and risk a very, very risky pass at turn one to be able to defend it off in turn two. But there's no guarantee he'll get it off in turn one. And I'm sounding like I'm just talking complete rubbish right now, I'm trying to explain this to myself. So we've got Madrox213 catching these guys at a very, very rapid rate right now. He's closed right up on them since they've been battling away. He's just been able to close the gap it's ridiculously quickly. He's left the other pack for dust there as they all circulate their way through the left-hander. Yeah, he's in that battle as well. Let's probably go through those guys then and really looking competitive at the moment. It's been a very good race so far. It would be said, drivers containing a very good racing mentality. Daniel T is escaping. 
Lazarus P5 following. Then you got Engage and PA contact almost. And Engage is able to hold it on just a little bit. And almost three wide there to come up the hill. They've got to sort themselves out. That's going to get very messy. And PA is the man to sort it out and get himself in position. And down the final straight, they come again. Who's that car up in the background there? That's El Nino. El Nino's had a bit of an off. Now that is... What's happened to him there? Unfortunately... Oh, we've got to take those elsewhere because back towards that front of the pack. There's still a change at the front of the field, but in game PA, uh, Fregel, Mr. Jones and Rick Speed are getting so, so close together right now. Those four are literally line and stern going through turn two. Front three also getting close together though. And look at this, they're side by side, Elite Speedway for the first time now has maybe a real shot at trying to get up the inside. And he can't quite get it to go though, still ball holds on a little bit more. But Elite Speed, we need to be careful. Matrox is creeping up the back stairs, slowly but surely. And look at that gaggle of cars there. Engage, PA and everyone else. Engage is not really in range. No, he's in range of an attack from PA, but it's about as far as it goes. 11 seconds off the lead at lap number six. And he's like, I think they're getting past uh, Daniels there, I think that is. That's going to be John Daniels. He... No, it's not. Okay, who's that then? They're getting past somewhere. I think that must have been a lap car. Is... Where else? Lazarus. Was it? It was Lazarus. It was Lazarus. It was not a lap car. It was Lazarus. Lazarus has dropped all the way back. And he's down to P9. He got damage. He spun again. Lazarus in big trouble. He's in the wall. Very big trouble there for Lazarus 16. He's out of the race. And on lap 6 out of 10, Lazarus 16 is out of the race. And out of the game as well. Big, big mistake there for Lazarus, unfortunately. Ball 666 and Speedway again. Now Speedway may have got it done finally. He's a cover the outside line. Ball still fighting though. And now somehow Elite Speedway can't get it to go again. He'll be on the outside. Can he sweep it round? He's had all race long. And uh, no, Ball 666 can't do it, I don't think. They're still side by side. Madrox is there as well. Bulls needs to swoop it round. Speedway's got it done surely for the first time on the seventh lap out of ten. He doesn't. Bull still pulls it back. How on earth is he doing this? Can someone please explain to me how Elite Speedway is pulling this off? He must be driving himself crazy right now. There's nothing he can do. This is phenomenal as Elite Speedway is trying at every corner every opportunity and ball still still is relentless in defending brilliant stuff there by the front three racing respect to all of them they must all deserve a victory so bad and you can't help but feel matrox may be the catalyst in this race if he can just get enough momentum and they both go wide you never know what's going to happen i think matrox could pull alongside quite easily And now, look at Elite Speedway, he's getting very up close and personal with balls as well. Macross was just a minor, tenth of a second away there. The top three separated by virtually nothing. Speedway has to be careful, we're approaching the last three laps now. And as they come across the line, let's do lap time check again then. 159.5 for balls, 159.7 for Speedway, and a 159.4. For Madrox, Madrox is going quicker. Daniel C with a two minutes and a one minute 59. One two minute there for Mr. PA. 59.9 for Engage, who's going a bit quicker, but PA's got through. And now look at Fregel. Fregel wants a bit of the action there, I think, and he's not going to be able to get it on the inside. Yes, he is in fact. I think they're still side by side there. 
And Frego's got through on the inside. Something Speedway has not been able to do today just yet. Engage will try back on the inside. But he won't be able to get it done. So there is a lesson to Elite Speed where you can pass on the inside of turn number one. It is doable. He wants to pass here though. Back at the lead. And Bulls is doing everything he can to hold them up right now. But Speedway finally may have the momentum he needs. The next corner will be in favour of Bulls. And Matrox is somehow not hitting them. Wow, this has been incredible. And I thought my voice was bad already, but I think it's going to get a whole lot worse because I'm going to end up screaming as they come across the line. They're going to start their penultimate lap in a moment. And this could honestly not get anywhere. This has been phenomenal stuff. And now Speedway trying to go round the outside. I'll be on the inside for the next corner. Clever driving there by Speedway. He's finally got it. On the penultimate lap almost. As they're about to start it. Balls comes back though. Balls is still not out of this. He wants the inside line. Speedway pushing in to the track limits. And Balls goes wide. And Speedway goes off almost. There he has. And Madros goes through. And Speedway now side by side with Madros. We said Madros can shake up the battle. And I think Madrox has just taken P2 from Speedway. Okay, okay, right, let's see what Madrox can do. Now he'll go to Bulls! Madrox is surely going to go for it. He's got up the inside, he's got the position, he can't go too deep. Bulls comes back underneath. Madrox has played that well because he will get the inside line next corner. But look at Elite Speedway. Oh my goodness me, the penultimate lap. And this has just been incredible. Madrox again up the inside now for the race lead. Madrox for the race lead. He's got it. Surely Madrox in the lead. Balls comes back again. And there's still almost three wider. Madrox has barely got it. Balls will get them. It's like slot car racing. It's like a scale X trick. They're side by side the entire time. And you cannot draw your eyes away from it. We've said all along Madrox could be in the lead of the race. And this has just been brilliant. <laughs> I'm losing my voice here because this is just incredible stuff. Full 666 now has a real chance to try and pull this back. He's got one lap to try and make this stick. He's got to be careful though. Elite Speedway still there as a dark horse. As they come towards the end of this lap, they've got a few more corners to go. And Matt Trox, he's going to be able to carry the lead, I think, to the very end of the race. So a nice job there for him. And in towards the final corner, they come to start the final lap. And I think Speedway went a bit wide there. Ball's got all very wrong and sideways. And Speedway surely is going to come right through and just smash that from them in towards turn number one then. So that's the final lap there, you just heard. We've not got long left to go at all now, and the pressure really starting to mount for every single one of these drivers, especially the front three. There is so much which can happen here, and it probably will do in the final lap, but right now it looks like Madrox could come home here in the lead. One way to find out though, we've still got quite some time left to go. And it's almost settled down. I don't want to get too excited because I know it's all just going to go pear shaped. And Freckles off in the background. And that is for P6. Seven to Mr. Jones. Engages there. Rick Speed. El Nino intent. Daniel's up to P11 after Lazarus's retirement. But I think all our attention deservedly needs to be focused on the guys at the forefront of the field. For it has been a tremendous race so far. There's no two ways about it. Ryan, keep an eye. I mean, I'm still recovering after lap number nine. Lap nine was possibly the closest lap 
we've seen it in the skill quad history and if this isn't a sign of things to come I don't know what is skill quad I think is the future of sim raceway and it wouldn't surprise me if we can get a couple of championships started maybe in the future using this because it would be phenomenal to see this quality of racing utilized in some sort of series well, let's wait and see then so as Matrox comes through the final corner is the final lap of the race. It's the final corner. And the underdog is going to take the victory. We thought it'd be born. Did not even know if Matrox T13 is a winner in the skill quad. And what a shot result that is. Balls in second. The lead speedway third. They all deserve to win. But Matrox T13, the underdog there, has been able to capitalise on every opportunity to take it. Fourth Daniel C. Fifth PA. Sixth Fraggle. 7th Engage, 8th Mr. Jones, 9th Rick Speed, 10th El Nino, and 11th is going to be John Daniels. That was fantastic. And the best part is we've still got one more race to go, the 1,000 to 1,100 skill quad. And the best part is also that we would still have two more laps left if it was that race. So you really cannot go anywhere. If you like what you've seen here, guys, please stick around. We've still got one more race coming up for you later on. From myself, Liam Jenkins, we will see you very soon for the final Sunday race-off skill quad race of week 36.